Tonight, extreme measures to hide the Duffy deal. RCMP allege a criminal cover-up inside the Prime Minister's office. The PMO's culture of concealment. This wasn't Nigel Wright acting alone. Just how far up the chain did it go? Is it plausible that the Prime Minister didn't know? Anatomy of a scandal. He informed very few people. Retracing the revelations that blew the hinges right off the doors of the Senate. This Prime Minister has been telling exactly the truth. And years later, the end. Good evening. We begin with bribery, breach of trust, and a campaign of deception planned by the Prime Minister's inner circle. The RCMP says Nigel Wright, former chief of staff for Stephen Harper, broke the law by using his own money to pay back Mike Duffy's improper expenses. Tonight, the email chain is incriminating and inclusive. It reveals a long list. Who knew about the cash? or at the very least, the scheme to conceal it. Along with Wright and Mike Duffy, there's the lawyer for the PMO, along with three other PMO staffers, four conservative senators, and two senior executive members of the Conservative Party. So at least 12 people were in the know. What's not clear yet is what Stephen Harper signed off on. CTV's Ottawa Bureau Chief Robert Fife joins us now with a $90,000 albatross. Bob. Lisa, it's what CTV has been reporting all along. Now an official RCMP document, 80 pages, lays it all out and lays it squarely in the Prime Minister's office. The RCMP affidavit contains mounds of evidence of potential criminal wrongdoing and a high-level cover-up run out of Stephen Harper's office. In those documents, what Nigel Wright does in fact say is that the Prime Minister knew exactly. that he had, quote, personally assisted Mike Duffy with repaying his expenses. The Prime Minister insisted all Wright ever told him was that Duffy had repaid the money himself, something he says the RCMP doesn't dispute. The investigator says he is not aware of any evidence that the Prime Minister was involved in the repayment or reimbursement of money to Senator Duffy or his lawyer. The RCMP could not be clear. No evidence of wrongdoing by Harper, but many unanswered questions. On February 22nd, hours before Duffy went on TV in a script approved by the PMO to say he repaid the money, Wright wrote, I do want to speak to the PM before everything is considered final. Less than an hour later, Wright followed up with another email. We are good to go from the PM. What did the Prime Minister approve during that hour? I was told that Mr. Duffy was going to repay the money himself. Still, the RCMP implicates at least 12 members of Harper's entourage in the secret $90,000 fake payback scam. Wright and Duffy, Perrin and Woodcock, Rogers, Novak, Van Hammond, Hamilton, Byrne, Gerstein, LeBreton, Takachuk, Stuart Olson. A hoax run out of Harper's office to fool Canadians. The RCMP says Duffy even took out a bank loan to give the appearance he was paying the money owed. Emails obtained by the RCMP reveal an elaborate conspiracy to subvert an independent audit into Duffy's expenses. Senator Irving Gerstein, the party bagman, even called the auditing firm Deloitte to see if they would halt their review after Duffy announced he'd repaid the money. Deloitte refused. That's when Wright enlisted three influential senators, then Senate leader Marjorie LeBreton, Carolyn Stewart Olson, one of Harper's most trusted advisors, and David Takachuk, all worked with Wright to whitewash a Senate committee's findings on Duffy. On May 8th, the day before major changes were made to the Duffy report, PMO staffer Patrick Rogers emails Wright, I just met with Stuart Olson. I gave her our changes. She agrees with them 100%. Then a snag. Christopher Montgomery, a senior LeBreton aide, objects. At 2.34 p.m., Stuart Olson writes, Montgomery says we as senators should not compromise ourselves. Rogers fires back. This is the direction. You're fulfilling commitments that were made. At 3.30, Rogers emails Wright. This is epic. Montgomery is the problem. Wright responds, should I come over? Le Breton is called to a meeting with Montgomery. At 342, another PMO staffer tells Wright, we are done. Patrick made it happen. The RCMP says Stuart Olson, Takachuk, and Le Breton misled police about their role. 
they talk what they talk. I'm only telling you what I know, right? So uh, my conscience is clear. I'm sorry if they don't believe I, I answered all their questions honestly. Wright is fighting back against the allegations of bribery and breach of trust, saying in a statement he remains confident his actions were lawful. The Mounties aren't saying that the latest names implicated in today's documents are also under criminal investigation, but they are seeking court orders to get their hands on more emails to further this investigation. Lisa. Now, Bob, you say this is a hoax run out of Harper's office to fool Canadians. Can you expand? Tell us more about the PMO attempts to influence that Deloitte audit. The Prime Minister's office not only tried to halt the audit process, Lisa, they pressured Duffy not to appear before Deloitte auditors. And Senator Dekachuk even chipped off Duffy that the audit had discovered he claimed expenses for a Florida vacation. And that line from the Nigel Wright email, I do want to speak to the PM before everything is considered final. And yet the RCMP have no evidence Harper knew. Unless Nigel Wright changes his story, Lisa, Harper is apparently in the clear. But after we broke the Duffy payoff on May 14th, Harper had to have known all the sort of details. He chose to keep that secret from Canadians. What we do know is that everyone associated with this scheme was moved aside in a cleanup operation. The Prime Minister's staffers moved elsewhere. Le Breton dumped his Senate leader, Carolyn Stewart Olson, and the Katchuk chopped from their leadership roles. A lot of movement in high places, Bob Fife. Thanks for this on the cover-up tonight. As Bob mentioned, Marjorie Le Breton lost her position as government leader in the Senate. She was the one tasked with keeping the other senators in line. Here's a line from an email she sent Nigel Wright on March 21st about making sure Mike Duffy stays muzzled. I said, Mike, you have just got to trust us on this, and please don't go crashing around invoking Nigel's name or that of the PMO. So how did it get to this? Bob's initial reports on the Duffy deal led to months of indignant denials, almost all of them contradicted in today's damaging documents. CTV's Laurie Graham takes a closer look at who said what as the scandal unfolded and how those statements hold up today. Giving you my answer. It's been a tangled web of words involving high-ranking conservatives who for months have dodged and dashed. Mr. I, can you just... Deflected and denied. Well, I don't know. But according to RCMP Corporal Greg Horton, they all knew far more than they let on, starting first with the deal. Nigel Wright would actually cover the cost of the $90,000 and the government would go easy on Senator Duffy in its report. But the conservative senators who wrote that report denied they went easy on Duffy. I take objection to so your word you? sanitize. You denied there was any involvement from the government or Nigel Wright. Should you be talking to the Prime Minister's sure office? We never interfered with any investigation. Even the Prime Minister dismissed the notion. The Senate, of course, as we all know, is an independent body. Not so, says Horton. Not by a long shot. The PMO influenced senators to Kachuk, Stuart Olson, and Le Breton to change the report to reflect wording that the PMO wanted. Notice the reference to the Prime Minister's office? Last May, Harper said his office wasn't involved. Uh, Mr. Wright made a, a very serious error. For that, he has accepted uh, full, uh, sole responsibility. Same thing in June. Those were his decisions. They were not communicated to me or to members of my office. By October, a slight change. Mr. Wright made this decision. He has been very clear. He informed very few people. Very few? Not according to Horton. There was considerable communication within the PMO on the matter of the Senate investigation of Senator Duffy, as well as communication between PMO staff and senators relating to the matter. And communication with this man, Ben Perrin, former PMO lawyer, who denied any knowledge of the Wright-Duffy deal even sent a critical letter to CTV to set the record straight. I was not consulted on and did not participate in Nigel Wright's decision to write a personal check. He may not have participated in the decision, but, according to Horton, Mr. Perrin was aware of Mr. Wright's personal decision to pay the money. I can't speak to what Mr. Uh, Wright may have told other people. From denial to damage control. Any time the Prime Minister has had a discussion about uh, uh, Mr. Duffy's expenses, it was always in the context of, if you have uh, collected monies for expenses you have not occurred, you need to repay them, period. 
And what about those emails, the ones Harper's office denied having to CTV last August? Well, after trolling through PMO computer servers, RCMP turned up 19,000 relevant emails. Of those, RCMP say 2,600 are being used as evidence in the investigation. Lisa. Okay, Lori Graham, thanks for this tonight from Ottawa. Some of the most incriminating email exchanges are in the RCMP document filed in court today. We've posted the entire 80 pages on our website, including details of RCMP interviews, with the PMO staffers and conservative senators implicated in this cover-up. You can read all about it at ctvnews.ca.